our next speaker is going to join us from Georgia, the state, because we're collecting them all. His name is Matthew Cardinale, and he is the founder and news editor of the Atlanta uh, Progressive News, and he recently won a state Supreme Court case that he is going to tell you about. Welcome, Matthew. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Um, I'm Matthew Charles Cardinale, news editor and founder of AtlantaProgressiveNews.com, which incidentally I found founded in 2005. It's an online independent news service, and um, within the last few weeks we celebrated our 1,000th original full-length news article, so I thought that was pretty exciting. Um, so this is how, okay, so the secret vote. Um, in February 2010, the City Council of Atlanta took a secret vote while they were on retreat having lunch. And the vote was about whether to limit public comment at committee meetings. And I wanted to know how the council members voted. That's really all I wanted. Um, I don't think that's too much to ask. So I asked the council, well, I, I, I requested the minutes, and the minutes didn't say how they voted. So I asked them to amend the minutes and showed them the law, and they um, had a different interpretation of the law and chose not to do that. Um, the city attorney prepared a memo stating that OCGA 5014-1E2 did not require it. I threatened to sue. They still didn't do it. I couldn't find an attorney. And when you threaten to sue somebody, um, you kind of have to do it or else next time they won't really take your threat seriously. So I sued myself without an attorney. Okay. Um, it is difficult to find an attorney willing to take on open government cases. Um, even so, citizens should be able to bring these actions themselves for a lot of reasons. One is, no one is going to care about your case more than you. Um, I had a friend uh, who found a FOIA lawsuit online, emailed it to me as a template. I kind of used that as the template for my complaint. Um, not despite not understanding all the parts. So OCGA 5014-1E2 is a section of the Georgia Open Meetings Act. It was actually amended a couple weeks ago, but it says the vote in a non-roll call vote, the vote shall be presumed unanimous unless the minutes list the names of those voting against the proposal or abstaining. Okay, and we'll, we'll get into that a little more in a second. So my case was dismissed pretty quickly um, the city of Atlanta filed a motion to dismiss, arguing that I failed to state a claim upon which relief could be granted. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Christopher Brasher ruled, okay, it doesn't say the minutes shall state who voted against and abstained. It just says that you shall assume it's unanimous if it doesn't state. So, gavel, go ahead, assume it's unanimous, thank you, have a nice day. The problem was the council had already told us that the vote was seven to eight. So we were actually being forced to assume um, a fraudulent um, thing. So, and I felt that that was problematic. Um, so um, I had an attorney who had been advising me in a, no, in a non-legal capacity, and he said, Matthew, you know, really, are you gonna spend two or three years on this? You could set bad case law. Um, don't, don't do it, just give up. Um, so that wasn't what I was gonna do. Um, and I appealed, I appealed anyway, because I, I felt that the ruling was, was so inherently, fundamentally problematic, because when you read minutes of an official agency meeting, you should actually be able to assume that what you're reading is, is a truthful reflection of what occurred. Um, so I appealed to the Court of Appeals of Georgia, um, who affirmed the lower court's decision. Um, at that point, I went to the Georgia First Amendment Foundation, who even more emphatically um, encouraged me to give up. Um, and they said, you know, really, you're just going to waste your time. You know, the Supreme Court never, hardly ever, um, overturns something of this nature. Um, I went ahead and filed my petition for certiorari with the Georgia Supreme Court. And in July 2011, the petition was granted. Um, it was the 32nd petition to be granted that year out of over 2,000 petitions filed in the state of Georgia. Um, and in October 2011, I went before the Supreme Court of Georgia and argued my case, which was pretty cool. Thank you. And two months ago, in February 2012, the Supreme Court of Georgia ruled in my favor, overturning the ruling of the Court of Appeals. As a result, secret votes are now banned, judicially banned, in, in the state of Georgia. Thank you.
Um, so, you know, city councils, county commissions, school boards, and other agencies, uh, you know, that come under this law can't take secret votes anymore. They have to tell us who voted against or abstained if anyone actually did. Um, this also advanced case law in a way that says that the act has to be construed broadly. And if, that is, if there's anything ambiguous, that it must be resolved um, in favor of openness and legislative intent, which is also openness. Um, another significance of this ruling is I think it really um, lets the citizens of Georgia know that they can use the mechanisms provided under the act um, to get justice. And even if you don't have an attorney, um, that you should just go ahead and do it anyway. Um, in addition, I asked the council recently to amend the minutes and they adopted um, legislation doing that. So they had to like stand there and read into the record everyone who voted um, yes and no. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I worked with the Attorney General of the state of Georgia and the legislature to change the section of the law um, so that it now just says um, the names of those voting for or against shall be um, listed. Um, it took about two and a half case, uh, excuse me, two and a half months for that case to come back to Fulton County. Um, it's now back in Fulton County, and I'm in the process of um, going through discovery and getting the city to admit basically what they did and getting the judge to rule that they violated the law and enjoin them from doing that anymore. Um, I continue to receive quest requests from citizens all over the state um, with their problems, you know, their open government problems, whether it's open meetings or open records. Um, and uh, I, have, I have applied actually to law school. I know that's a little counterintuitive since I did so well <laughs> as a pro se litigant. But um, in order to really be able to help other people, I decided I would go ahead and do this. Um, but I also believe that citizens should not have to have a lawyer for um, everything that they uh, want to do to get justice under open meetings and under open records. Um, therefore, I would like to launch a website for the state of Georgia um, for citizens that teaches them how to file their own pro se lawsuits. And I hope um, at this conference to discuss this idea, I have prepared a workshop um, that, so I hope some of you guys get involved in that. Um, and in part, it's because citizens shouldn't have to learn by trial and error the way that I did. You know, why can't we all work together, communicate, and um, that way people can start with an idea of knowing what they have to do. Because um, the issues are too important. And if somebody loses on a technicality, you know, the citizens, oh, this is me. On the, this is us uh, and, and my supporters standing in front of City Hall announcing our victory. But I was just gonna say, um, you know, if you, make, if you lose on a procedural thing, the citizens don't know, oh, well, he lost on a technicality. You know, she lost because service wasn't perfected properly. You know, no, it's gonna be, oh, that case had no merit. So it's very important to arm people with the, some of these basic tools. This is uh, me standing in front of the Supreme Court getting ready to make oral arguments. And this is our Supreme Court. Uh, the woman in the middle is Chief Justice Carol Hunstein, who authored uh, the opinion. Thank you very much to the Sunlight Foundation. Um, I'm really, I think the Sunlight Foundation is amazing. Uh, you know, I came up and went to the office and I was expecting like a little couple cubby holes. And I was pretty amazed to see how big and how much, you know, they have going on. So, um, and yeah, please let me know if you want to come to the workshop. I'll, we'll see you there. Or at any point, if you have any feedback or ideas about developing um, these online tools for pro se litigants. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew.